I've always been interested in what it's like to be an animal, to get inside the animal's world. Tending to shoot wide angle by preference, getting the cameras up close, very little long lens work, which used to be the, the mainstay of natural history. I've always been obsessed with how can we get closer, how can we get in that world. The first spy film I ever made was on lions and I wanted to present yet a different view of lions. There have been so many lion films and again I was being driven by this desire to get into the animal's world. So what I created was this thing called a boulder cam. It was a rock with a camera inside and the first time I deployed it this female was sitting under a bush and we drove this boulder cam in not knowing what's going to happen and she came right up to it, sat down and laid down next to it. That was within seconds of deploying it and all her little cubs came running over and within no time at all they were lined up suckling in front of her and she put her leg on the boulder cam and I had the most incredible view I've ever seen of a lion. And so from that point, I thought, this is the only way to film, you know. This is how, from now on, I'm going to make wildlife films. Since then, we've made a huge number of spy programs, and each one sort of builds on the experience of the last. Once you're into that viewpoint, and also because we can record continuously, we are getting footage that uh, people haven't seen, we haven't seen, that you don't know about these animals, and not only is it new behaviour, you're seeing it from the animal's viewpoint, so you're immersed in that world. It's really beguiling for the audience, it really sucks people in, you know, into the animal's world, so they feel very, very different than they would on a natural history film, which is simply a portrayal um, shot, no matter how beautifully, but from a distance there is a different feeling that you get from these, this spy film, and that's of being in there with them. Initially we had spy cams. And then with penguins, we started to introduce the idea of spy creatures. And that brought with it a whole load of other interesting things because the animal that we're filming is sometimes interacting in a really fascinating way that reveals so much about their behaviour. We had our spy penguin out in a penguin colony. He'd been observing, you know, the mating pairs coming back. Um, you know, they spend six months apart at sea, then they come back at the breeding site and you know they all pair up again. Um, and there's this poor lonesome penguin who was waiting for his mate to come back. She didn't come back with all the others, so he started to look at our penguin cam in new eyes and started to court it. Um, and there's a really touching scenes where he starts to preen our penguin cam and you know, there's, there's a romance made in heaven but was never going anywhere and was sort of um, interrupted when his mate came back and then beat up our penguin cam. Well, you know, the amazing story telling by, by the sheer matter of having a penguin cam there and nothing we could have predicted and nothing, you know, that we were expecting, but an amazing piece of behavior and a very funny piece of television too. One of the most emotional moments that and most powerful sequences we filmed was when an emperor penguin lost his chick, frozen chick, and we filmed them grieving over this chick. The emotion that they were expressing, I mean you never use this, if you're a scientist you never say a, a, a penguin grieves, but when you watch the, the footage, the footage speaks for itself and you have this incredible emotional scene while this penguin who has invested everything in this chick has now lost it, um, frozen on the ice, tries to tuck it into her pouch to revive it and then has to decide to leave it. And it's made even more poignant that her friend, because they have friends, is there supporting her. You know, and it's, you know, those kind of moments which show that these animals that we're filming are hugely more complex than we might think. You know, I think that's what, you know, makes powerful television and that's what makes people understand and relate to animals in a way that, you know, I want them to relate to them as more as individuals and, you know, creatures with feeling rather than just an animal. Well, this is Rockhopper Cam. This is the, um, the one we took to the Falklands. I mean, his role was to walk in among the colony. It's all controlled by just an ordinary games controller. He can actually mimic the, the movements of the real penguins. So that was one reason he got so accepted um, in, in the colony. 
because it, he, he was mimicking a lot of what they were doing. And so, you know, the penguins started reacting to him as though they were one of his. I mean, a strange penguin, but they still kind of quite liked him. And I, I think a lot of the, the success of the spy creatures is that they're, they're non-threatening, they're intriguing. They, they don't run away from them. If they saw a human, they would run a mile. Humans had to film from a hide, while this guy could be in, right in among them. So it's about being accepted, really. Most recently, I made Earth Flight, which flew along five birds across the world and experienced the world from their viewpoint. And for that, we had to develop and improve on a huge number of techniques, you know, so we could get wingtip to wingtip flying bird shot. And so we were able to fly, so, say, over Venice or over the bulb fields of Holland, all wingtip to wingtip with this flock of birds. We have very long shots, generally. You know, while, while something's happening, we will keep running. In the programme, they may be cut very, very short, but for stock footage, they run and run. I mean, I think our, our footage stands out because it is so different, and it, it tends to be very glossy. It's always shot at really high quality, and it has this viewpoint of being there and in, the, in that animal's world. And so the images leap out of the screen, and they have a a real reaction with the audience, it's just powerful and draws them in. So they're striking um, as, as well as at the absolute highest quality. So they're very commercial, you know, in a, in a sort of glossy way. There is that standout quality as well.